Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Um, sorry about the delay. Um, I was meant to be here at 11, but I hope you haven't abandoned um, the live um, or waiting for this um, stream to come live. Um, I'm here to show you how to make one of these lovely colorful needle felted birdies. And um, you, maybe you've already needle felted before, maybe you never have needle felted before, but um, the next half hour is your opportunity to ask as many questions as possible. My colleague Emma, I've got her in my ear, so if you pop comments into the live stream and ask away, then uh, she will be able to feed that back to me as I can't see the comments. And um, just to show you the birds a little bit closer up, they're, um, they're quite softly needle felted. I'd say that you probably need about three to four grams of, um, of the felting wool bats, and I'll show you exactly what you need and, and how you use it. I have got two camera settings, so you will see me either as you see me now, or you will see the overhead view of the camera i'm just going to check that and make sure that it's working fine and then um, you can see um, how the other setting will work there you go so you've got my hands here and i will be working um, from here and what i will show you um, first off is um, here are the birds i will be making one of these and the wool that i'm using comes from our um tropic trop, um it's actually ex exotic wool mix i want to say tropical but it's not tropical and there's lots of different colors in there in fact there are two four six eight colors in there. there's uh, there's a couple missing here and um you the wool mix that we we um sell ready has got 10 grams of each of these um colors in there which means that one of these should make you three birds so you can do the maths eight colors three birds each um that will make you quite a few birds to maybe display on the string or if you uh, prefer you can um, make them individually you can um, line them up side by side um, you can also needle felt little balls in between um, or you can uh, put little bells in between and hang them up or they can be a mobile and um, if you remember before christmas last year we did the heart hearts here at the virtual village hall so if you've already got a taste of needle felting then you're probably ready for the next project so let's start out so what you need is a felting needle that's an all-important tool it's not a very um, hand-friendly um, tool because it's meant to sit in machines and felt up and down on on um, on man-made or natural fibers and turn it into felt sheets so you all know those already but you probably didn't know that they were made by these felting needles and they're specialist because they have got um they have got notches at the end of this um, needle and I'm going to go back to the overview camera and then you can um, see everything much better. So they have little, they have these notches here at the at the tip of the needle and as soon as you stub these into wool, it tangles up the fiber tighter, 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 makes the whole thing smaller until you end up with um, a neat shape because you can sculpt it in the meantime. Now I'm going to put these two birds there, they can have a little a little um, um, flirt there and I'm going to start by using some wool here. Now I've already made from this uh, 10 gram wool I have made um, this little bird here so I'm going to use the uh, um, the rest and I split that into two and um, you also need a felting mat. Now what you can see here is an ever so slightly grubby one of my our um, earth friendly felting mats. They come when you get them they're absolutely um, pure and um, lovely wool color but um, th this has been used over and over and over and that's the whole point of it that it's actually an environmentally friendly felting mat it comes in you have to use it in two layers and um, it's 100% wool so if you're already needle felting and you haven't got one of those yet do go and get one so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to shape this um, wool bat and the bat is um, defined by it having quite sort of shorter fibers and they're all a little bit sort of messed up and tangled up compared to wool tops which is usually a long strand of fibers all lined up nicely. Wool bats are great for 3D needle felting. They felt down super fast and this one is a New Zealand Merino. It has got a little bit of a sparkle in there and I'm now um, rolling this into um, a sausage shape basically and as you can see I'm teasing the fibers up because I want to get as many wraps in there as I can possibly do and when you get to the end of these wispy fibers you just fold them into the shape over onto the shape and then you need your felting needle and these wispy fibers are still sticking out there but you're now going to tuck these fibers in 
by stabbing into them. And what you can see I'm doing here is I'm felting in a straight line in and out with my needle um, so that I'm keeping the needle completely stress-free, meaning that there's no bend, no, no um, stress on the needle by twisting it or bending it. It is the simplest motion in and out, straight line, Ever. And once you've done this, you have now learned how to needle felt if you've never needle felt it before. So I've got a, a bit of a unshapely sausage here now. And what I want to do is I want to get to this shape. So the the bird is round at the at the base. It's got a flat top. It's got a pointy up tail and it's got a little bit more here on the head um, pointing up. So to do this, I'm going to look at my shape now and I'm going to decide that this needs to come up so that you can see here is the round tummy shape. And to do this, I'm turning it upside down. I'm actually holding it in that round shape and I'm stabbing around where I want the wool to comply with my wishes because that's what it's all about. You decide where the wool um, will shrink and where the shape is going. And just by doing this, you can see I've already made a, um, a round shape there. With um, 3D needle felting, you do have to turn your shape constantly because you don't want it to become flat. So make sure that you um, keep turning it. And because it's now just round, I need to now work a little bit here on the top. Now I'm going to make this slightly larger bit here, the head. And by just stabbing into it gently, I you can see I can sculpt the, the shape of the head to be round and um, work this from both sides all over. The only thing you've got to be mindful of is not to stab into your fingers. I should also just mention that um, for the special occasion of being here um, on this amazing uh, charitable uh, Facebook page, um, the Virtual Village Hall, we have um, given you a special discount code, which is the Makers um, discount code for 20% off on our products. And that is Makers um, with capital letters 20, which you can put into the checkout at our website. Um, please feel free to ask questions. Please make comments. Tell us if you've needle felted before. Tell us how you found out about needle felting. Tell us if you've heard of the Makers. Um, tell us a little bit about you. Be lovely to hear. And if you're watching this any time after today, which is the 26th of August 2021, then um, you can tag us into your um, comments so we, we can still uh, answer any questions. We can still get back to you if you uh, tag us and um, we are the makers. And I'm just going to go to the big cam camera so I can actually show you um, what what our uh, Facebook handle is. Um, there it is. So we are squiggly bit, the makers with two s's.co.uk. If you, if you type that in, that will tag us. That's our Facebook handle. And, and then we will see the message popping up and then um, we can reply to you um, directly. So this is the shape of the bird now. It's still quite soft. If you're, if you want to, you can felt your shapes down much, much firmer. There's no right or wrong, but if you want to use less wool, then you shape it um, less firmly. And if you want to use more wool, then um, obviously you can get to the same size by just felting it down much much firmer people often ask is there a right or a wrong way no there isn't as long as it holds together it's your preference some people can't but help felt really hard some people find it hard to felt a shape down very very firmly so going back to the overhead camera if you need to add a little bit of wool because you've got um, maybe the head isn't quite distinct enough or you need to add a little bit more um, on the bulk or anything like that you can just take uh, little wisps of wool and, um, and that also goes for if you've got something that's unsightly, if there's a hole or a crack or something like that. And you can um, lay it over to cover up any cracks. If you need to build bulk, you can just take wads of wool and um, put them over wherever you want to build up a little bit of bulk, smooth it over, felt it in, and the wool that you're um, putting on top will just literally melt into the main shape. And that is a really good um, extra tip to know. By the way, this set of instructions for the little bird is also a free tutorial on our website. If you want to have something that you can print out, then uh, pop over onto our website um, 
www.themakers.co.uk and you um, you find that and many many other free tutorials on our website we do lots and lots of live streams on youtube as well so if you if you get the taste of it and um, if you want to learn more about needle felting then find us on our on youtube where we have a channel with many many um, videos that are already there and we do weekly live streams at 1 p.m on tuesday every every week that's why it's called weekly um so i'm gonna add a little bit me more here now i've added more to the head i want to add a bit more to the tail um you don't necessarily have to do that every time you make a bird but i'm showing you different techniques and how easy it is to add to your shape but also how easy it is to felt it down if there's too much so um for the tail i'm actually stabbing right into the felting mat here because i want it to be flat rather than round like the head so you can do this from both sides the fibers will just get pushed through and then you um, adjust that by going in from the other side again and you can see how easy it is to shape and um and just tuck these fibers away where you don't want them to be and whenever you work on one part of, of a shape like for example the bird you might find you need to work on another part again what i've noticed here is that this has become quite flat so i can now make it round again by going over it again so it's a constant turning um a adjusting um looking at it wondering where else do you need to um, make adjustments and then just go for it now it's a, such a simple bird shape that um it it allows you to um to make sort of more fantasy birds or anything like this if you want to make a more precise bird shape like for example the blue tit um which we have got as a kit at the moment and the wren is coming up as a kit and then we've also got um the always very popular robin um here as well then once you know how to make this bird shape you will be absolutely flying making these birds ha ha flying um that was an unintended pun um you can get these bird legs um from our um, website as well you can use the code to get them which sometimes finish off the birds really lovely especially if you're going for the realistic shape or bird uh, look in it as such and um and you might you might just get the taste i mean the robins are always lovely for christmas now i, I need to um add a add a beak to my bird i need to add, add eyes and wings that's what's still missing so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to choose a contrasting color and uh, you can use this code until the end of this month which is um tuesday so that's the 31st so 31st in August, I think there is. Anyway, it's the end of August. You can code the co you can use the code, and that is um, I just show it to you again. It is um makers with two S's 20, all capital letters, and you can pop that into um the code box at the checkout. So it's pretty much at the end of when you're checking out. So whilst I've been talking, I've added a little wisp of yellow onto the side of the bird for wing. Now the challenging bit is that you're gonna have to do this on the other side and try and do it at the same height and level where you've done it before now the good news is that if you felt something onto your shape and you haven't felt it down too much yet you can actually take it off again but with this one i'm quite lucky um, that i've seemed to have done it pretty much in the same place so check the for symmetry um on on anything that you're doing for, especially for animals because that can make all the difference how um whether they look right or wrong you know when you sometimes think oh something is a bit off then it's often the symmetry rather than anything else that you've done to it so i've added a little bit of um of um, a wing there i can add a little another little color inside this is completely you can design your own bird this is just a suggestion that um that we have made the actual wing wing shape you can manipulate just by using your felting needle and going um sort of in quite a consistent way around the edges to keep the wing more that kind of leaf shape if you like um keep it nice and wispy with needle felting less is always more because you can always add more wool but it's hard to take it off now little beak we're going to make that shape separately and i'm going to use let's see what color i'm going to use let's use um let's use this a uh, nice nice sort of flamingo color salmony pink and for this you need a tiny tiny amount and you're going to roll I'm, I'm folding this in half this little wisp and then i'm rolling it in from the side to make a, a tight little tight little sausage so i'm literally um pulling the fibers round and round and round over part one particular area and i'm laying this now onto my felting mat it's tiny i know and i'm just stabbing gently into the tip of that 
I'm holding on to the unfelted fibers at the back. That's a good, good handle, so to speak, because it stops you from um, stabbing yourself. And to shorten the beak, I'm going in ever so slightly from the front at a shallow angle. You will get to know um, how the needle responds best to um, to the stabbing. So it's not just straight in from above, in and out. You can also go in at angles because wherever you stab the needle is where you pull the fibers. That's the direction of where the fibers are going. So if you go in and out from the top, then the fibers pull in from top to bottom. If you go in from the side like that, then the fibers pull in that way. So you shri the shrinkage is taking, that is, is taking place in the direction of where you stab the needle. Um, once you've started um, stabbing and needle felting, you'll find it's very addictive. So just be warned about that. And uh, once you've done uh, felted the tip here, I'm just giving it a bit of a twist just to um, flatten down the, the wispy fibers that are sticking out. And now I'm broadening out the fibers here at the back so that they make a little, almost like a little platform. And they will now fit onto the face of the bird here. So I'm literally putting them into the middle of the bird and um, and I'm just going to stab very gently with my needle. Now, this needle I'm using is a coarse needle and I can just see that it's bouncing off my work here at the moment. So I'm going to go down a needle size um, because then the needle will still go into the wool and it's, it's also pulling the fibers in that I want there to go in um, right really close to the beak. It's pulling these fibers in rather than just bouncing up and down. So that leads me on to talking about different needle felting um, needle sizes. And um, the one that I started out with was a coarse felting needle, which is a, a gauge 36 that's measured in the wire gauge. And the one that I'm using right now is actually, um, it's a twisted um, fine needle, which is a 40. So the higher the number, the finer the needle. And it also has got a different shape um, at the working part of the needle. So twisted just means that they're really efficient needles. If you are already needle felting, and you've never tried a twisted needle, you have no idea what you're missing. Go and get yourself some twisted needles. They are the best things since sliced bread. We absolutely love them because they are. Um, you can use them for much longer um, because they don't bounce. Even the coarse needle wouldn't bounce on this right now. And you can also. Um, you can also use so that if you can use them for longer it means that they leave they leave less holes as well because they have a much finer end to go in but they're just as efficient as the coarser um, standard needles so i've made a little beak here now and um he's missing eyes now you can see that i'm still working the shape all over because even if the shape's not perfect when you start adding the details you have lots of scope to adjusting the shape and felting it down um, more or adding even more wood. Now for the eyes, I have actually used um, in the little um, string of birds, I've used our glue in eyes. They are glass eyes, um, glass beads on a pin. And we love them for um, for giving um, the bird the eye and a put a little twinkle in his, in his eyes straight away. You can needle felt eyes, you just put a little patch of wool there. But it, this is such a, an easy way of adding an eye. And for this, you can even use your felting needle to prepare for it. Use your felting needle to make a hole. Get Just sink the needle in all the way. Got a little hole there. Insert one of the eyes straight away. And I love this because it's instantly a little bird looking at you saying hello. And then you do the same on the other side. Make sure you've got it in the right height. Remember the needle comes out at the other side. So don't have your finger in exactly that, that precise spot. And, um, and put the other eye in. Then look at the bird from the front. Look all around. Make sure the eyes are in the same um, line and the same height. And then all you need to do is use a dab of uh, PVA glue. Love these little glue sticks because uh, we never use much glue. And you just put that behind the eye here and then you push the eye firmly back in. So don't take the eyes out. Just let the nozzle uh, position itself behind the eye, squirt out a tiny bit of glue. And then that is all you need to fasten um, the eyes into the into the bird and there's a little bird sitting here now um it's got a twin almost a twin here already and that's uh, basically how you make um the bird now um i will just check in a minute how much time we have got because i might be able to make a second one um of of the little bird or if you've got any questions then do ask questions i've also got um i think i've got the live stream up here as well so uh, potentially i could see if anybody is um asking questions right now. So 
there you go there's a little bird and um i'm hopefully emma will tell me in a minute i've got oh i've got uh, i've got 12 minutes left so i can probably manage to make another little bird and maybe talk about some other uh, useful needle felting tips and tricks what color shall i make um ooh. oh uh, no, I've got one of those. Oh, let's just make another color of, um, let's make a nice, let's make a bright pink one because it's it's the sort of day that needs brightening up. Um, the summer is disappearing and um, we need to have a little bit of bright colors that remind us of of, of the high summer that, um, well, we didn't have much of it, but a little bit and we have to wait for another year to get there. So just taking this a bit of wool, I'm rolling this in same way as I did before. I keep it at this camera setting for now. So I've made a little sausage shape. You can roll this in really tightly if you want to, or you can keep it quite loose. As, as I said, there's no right or wrong. Once you get to the wispy ends here, all you need to do is stop these down. And I'm using my coarse needle for this because as soon as I stop them down, it will um, secure the shape and it doesn't pop open. And now I can work on shaping this. If you decide that you've rolled this up and you want your bird to be bigger than that, then just take um, now is a good time to do that just take another little bit of wool by the way you can see all the wool colors here behind me that come in the in the wool mix which is the exotic wool mix so you've got the bright pink the the bright green the bright yellow the flamingo salmony pink you've got a um a paler color here which is our seashell shimmer so it's got a little bit of sparkling in it um this is an aquamarine and there is a um, a blue green and then there's a turquoise here as well so they're brilliant um colors to make bright birds so if you want to make this shape a little bit bigger just have a um a bit of wool um that you flatten out and just wrap it around the existing shape so you can actually almost pretend that you've still got more wool to go around the bird and that will make it bigger um this will also help if you want to make it tighter just give it a tighter wrap and then felt the end wisp, wispy ends down again and um and that secures your shape so now remember you need to have a round base and a flat top so see where it where that sort of looks already that way i'm turning it this upside down and then i'm felting into the um, round shape by pinching it round as i'm holding it and felting into it and um, for this part i will just go back to the overhead camera because that um, probably will help you um, see better so you've you've seen me do these um this before um if you're buying any of our kits i should just say we are on a quest to make everything plastic free so um, you might have seen people using foam mats for needle felting we haven't used these in over a year now because uh, they are really 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 bad for the environment they cannot be broken down very easily and uh, they also once once you've um used them lots they start to disintegrate and then you end up with bits in your felting um, shape which is which isn't great and so we've we've actually decided that we are we're no longer um, using them and we've gone completely um, into the direction of wool as we're already using natural materials in our products anyway wool was the obvious choice to go to so if you buy a kit from us you you don't get this uh, particular um, earth friendly felting mat but what you do get is a um, our eco wool mat which looks like this it's made from recycled wool it comes in two parts again and um, and when you're done with it if you don't need it anymore you can put it in your home compost you can leave it out in the garden for for the birds to pick it apart and um and use it to um to make their nests nice and woolly and cozy and um if you um if you want to invest in something a little bit more special then do go and get the earth friendly felting mat they are virtually indestructible and if you uh, need to replace anything it might be the top the soft top mat and we sell these parts separately as well they come in different sizes from a6 which is postcard size to a5 a4 a3 and then there are some um some other special larger sizes available too um yeah we really love them and we've had really good reviews about them still shaping this i'm making this bird super fast now um so you've seen all of this before flat felting the tail going straight into the um, mat to do this shaping the tail i'm still using my coarse needle 
uh, that I started out with, and I might just have to change over to the fine needle again, you can make the tail pointy or flat, that's entirely up to you. These are little fantasy birds, so they might have special features. Oh, by the way, if you find um, something in your wool that looks like uh, dried up grass, that's exactly what it is. It's also referred to as um, VM, vegetable matter. You can pull it out, it usually works its way out of, um, out of the shape as you're stubbing it. And um, and I'm going to quickly add a beak now. And if you can hear um, some noise in the background, that's um, the lawn watch has been started up. But um, I guess it, the grass is still growing like crazy at the moment. And I'm um, going to give the bird wings by just adding a, a wisp of wool here on the side. You can keep these wispy. You don't have to make um, a nice wing shape. It's entirely up to you how you want to design this bird. And then do this on the other side. So you can see once you get the hang of it, you can be um, churning these out quite quickly. And they're really, really lovely to have them as little garlands um, or little mobiles, maybe a child's mobile. Maybe as wind chimes, you can put little uh, bells on there as well and put them out in the in the porch or um, somewhere nice where, where they can be heard and seen. I'm going to make a quick beak now. Rolling this up and felting it down. This is where you have to watch your fingers because um, you're working really close to where you're stabbing. You're holding on very close to where you're stabbing. Give that a twist, use the end bits, broaden them out, felt it onto the face of the bird, but I'm going to um, a finer needle now, as I did before. And all that's missing now are a set of eyes, but because I, what I will show you, instead of using the glue in eyes, because not everybody has got them handy, you can actually use wool to needle felt the eyes. It does look slightly different, but nonetheless, um, as uh, charming and of course if you put little bits into um into the your shape then um, we're not saying that these are suitable as toys but they will definitely not be uh, they're, they're small parts and can obviously come out again even though you've glued them on so if you want to needle felt the eyes just take a little bit of um, a contrasting wool lay the, lay it onto the side of the bird and just stab it in it's as simple as that it's absolutely the fastest and easiest thing to do and then repeat it on the other side and um, there you go I've got a, another bird ready to be um, joining the ones that you've already got it's going to add a bit of um, contrasting color in there that's probably the quickest bird I've ever made but you get the gist if you've missed anything the first time around hopefully I've covered it better this time and um, if you're stringing the birds up, then do use a, um, a, good, a good quality string so that it doesn't tear. And then just go in from the top with your um, sewing needle, obviously, and your string attached. And um, all the way through the bird, unless you're stringing them up side by side, then you're obviously going in from the front and from the back as well. Right. So that's bird number two done within half an hour. And um, they're, the they're the two that I've just made. and. Um, they can join the rest of the of the gang and that's basically all there is to it um admittedly i have needle felted for um 17 years but i promise you lots and lots of beginners take to it like fish to water or like a bird to the air and um and you won't be any different so do um, check out what else we can offer um, in terms of our free tutorials if you want to learn something else you don't always have to go 3D there's 2D you can do flowers butterflies there's lots of Christmas stuff that's coming up um, robin baubles are very popular for um, making lots of those to give away as a gift um, or maybe just for your own home decoration really easy to make now you've seen how it's done you can do it too it's um yeah it's it's the best thing ever needle felting i absolutely love it so do do make sure that you um you have a go at it it's very therapeutic and it looks beautiful and um we're here to support you so join our uh, makers uh, facebook group where we have a, a group called everyone a maker because we believe everyone is a maker and uh, you can join that group for more useful tips but also to share what you've done and if you want to pop anything in the comments here maybe a picture of what you've made that would be amazing and um, do uh, remember to maybe pop over to our page the makers 
which um, which our our Facebook handle is themakers.co.uk. Sounds like an email uh, sounds like a web address, but it's actually our Facebook handle. So themakers.co.uk. However, on Instagram and Twitter, we are the makers without the bits at the back. So just the makers with two S's. And um, all very complicated. I'm still getting my head around it. But that's basically all I've got to say today. And it's been a pleasure here uh, being here. Thank you for inviting us and apologies again for turning up late. Well, I will see you on time, but technical things were completely against us all together. So take care, everybody. Lots of love and we'll see you again. Bye.